Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Um, this is officially the last episode of uh, Season 2. Um, today we're doing the recap video. Um, I do this every season. Uh, I mean, I did it last season. And, I mean, this is only Season 2. But we're doing it again, and I'm go going to do this every season in the future. Uh, just to go over all of my scores that I've given various shows um, and movies and whatever. And then uh finalize them and compare them um because sometimes my opinions change over time and it's more important this season than last season because to be honest halfway through the season you may have noticed that i've kind of forgot to give scores um for a lot of these shows so i went back and uh gave some scores to a lot of stuff so that's what we're going to be going over today uh let's hop right into this all right so the first thing we have to go over sorry my chair man this is a squeaky chair uh especially when i'm trying to record videos it's pretty annoying uh first episode we did this season um i had started watching naruto shippuden and since there's like 500 episodes and technically there aren't seasons I, I mean i was watching it on hulu so they divide up the arcs into seasons so they're on hulu it shows like nine seasons um but what i just decided to do instead was um review them by arc um so the first episode I did uh, this season was um, the Gara rescue arc or the Kazakage recovery mission arc, um, which I think trying to review Naruto Shippuden may have been a mistake. Like if I do it by um, by arc, I don't know. Um, I feel like I should have just watched it and then reviewed it at the end, gave my thoughts on the series as a whole, but. Yeah, I went ahead and, you know, tried to do it by art. And it, I didn't get too far because I still haven't watched Naruto Shippuden in a while. i rather, uh, I've been wa uh, reading the manga. So I have, uh, you guys saw the, the manga box set uh, opening. So I have from the beginning of Shippuden all the way till the end. So I've been reading that right now. I haven't reviewed any of it yet because um, I wanted to get past where I was in the show in the manga and then review that so i'm currently there i'm like um we're like he and whatever the other guy's name is uh they're fighting some chick with the tailed beast or something uh so once i get through with a few volumes i'll or review them for you guys um but that's besides the point naruto spruden uh with the the gara re rescue arc uh, i gave an eight eight out of ten um definitely starting f with um shippuden like just the beginning of it uh was way more fun than the original naruto i've said this before in one of my older videos i did i think it was the second episode i did of anime review uh the original naruto is just so freaking boring so um yeah i mean i skipped like the last what was it three seasons or something just because it was basically all filler and there was just no point in watching it um and i've said this before but the original naruto once sasuke leaves uh, with orochimaru you can basically stop watching like after they fight each other on the waterfall and that arc comes to a close the, the sasuke re rescue mission um after that arc you can basically stop watching uh, and then just watch Putin. um but yeah so, starting off Naruto Shippuden, it was much already much better uh, than um, the original Naruto because we're kicking it off with the Akatsuki. Naruto's older, Sakura's older. All of them are older. We're seeing new characters, or not new characters, but older characters that are uh, coming back, and they're also older. They're just more powerful now. Um, and we're just hopping right into it, you know. So, I gave it an 8 out of 10. Uh, my, may have been a little high. I'd even go down to maybe 7.9. It was a pretty good arc, though, uh, with Gara and Datara fighting. Um, yeah, so, it was a good arc. Um, now, in second spot here, I got Attack on Titan Seasons 1 through 3. Um, I watched binge-watched the show. Um, or at least the first three seasons, um, and I gave that a 9.6 out of 10. Now, a lot of people would say Attack on Titan's a 10 out of 10. It's very good, but 
again, I'm pretty hesitant of just like throwing out tens of like a 10 out of 10, 100 percent, you know, like goat anime, goat anime, goat manga. I'm hesitant on giving out 10 out of 10s all the time. So that's why. And I honestly, Attack on Titan was good, but it wasn't like my favorite show that I've ever seen. It wasn't the best I've ever seen. So don't get me wrong. It was very good. Uh, I gave it a 9.6. All of the uh, world building and the politics and stuff was pretty cool. Uh, Attack on Titan can be kind of confusing um, at some parts when it has to, like, you got the inherited memories and then you're, like, talking about all the different history and stuff, all the names and the uh, succession of the Titans and, like, the, uh, the royal family. All that stuff gets pretty confusing, but... It all comes together in the end, so, yeah, uh, I mean, we don't get, it's not as confusing as what the fourth season was, uh, I mean, at the end of season three, we got that whole thing with, um, what was it, uh, Gresha, is his name Gresha, Gresha Yeager, and that whole part was a little bit confusing, like, I understood that it was a flashback, but I didn't really know what was happening, so, I mean, it all makes sense to me now that I've, you know, caught up, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's very good, though. I highly recommend it to anybody who, for some reason, hasn't seen Attack on Titan. Uh, 9.6 out of 10. Um, the third episode we did was the first season of Fire Force. Sorry, guys, for the weird cut there. Um, yeah, so Fire Force season one was pretty good. Uh, 8.7 out of 10. Um... This is season one. I haven't watched season two yet. I plan to. I heard it wasn't as good as the first season, which isn't a good sign considering the first season was okay. It, it was pretty good, I guess. I mean, I wasn't... I, it's a cool concept with the different uh, fire abilities and stuff, and they're like a special firefighters. That's kind of a, a cool concept. But overall, I mean, I guess I wasn't, like, super into it. Um, like, I, I know some people who really liked it. Um, so, yeah, I gave it an 8.7 out of 10. It was still pretty good. It was worth a watch. It was entertaining. And maybe Season 2 will tie some things together. I don't know. But I've heard it wasn't excellent. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, the fourth episode we did was Cowboy Bebop. Now, I've talked about Cowboy Bebop before. Easy 10 out of 10. Instant classic. Uh, came out in the 90s. Um, I forget what it came on. Was it Toonami or something? I don't know. I forget exactly when it aired or what. Well, I know when it aired, but what it aired on. Uh, but yeah, when watching Cowboy Bebop, it's just one of those where if you're a fan of anime, you just got to watch it. Um, it's got that retro anime vibe, uh, which is always pretty cool. Sometimes it can be boring, like with the, the retro anime vibe, but this, it almost added to like the, it's, it's a space Western, which Westerns are dope. And I love the space stuff, like sci-fi star Wars type stuff. Um, so, and they're bounty hunters, so at the time I watched this, I was, uh, watching Mandalorian Season 2 when that came out, and there's a lot of similarities, because they're just, it's, they're both space westerns, and they're bounty hunters, um, one of my favorite, uh, Marvel things right here, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, there's a lot of parallels, uh, between, uh, Cowboy Bebop and Guardians of the Galaxy, I love the idea of just, like, a, a ragtag group of I don't know mercenaries or um, bounty hunters and they're just traveling together in space just like they, they're all unique characters and just the way their personalities interact with each other is really cool um, and that's one of the reasons why I love Cowboy Bebop it's got some pretty cool fights um, a lot of chase scenes we got like the whole vicious with a uh, fight um, what is it called the battle of fallen angels bruh that episode was so good uh with Faye and he has to go i i won't spoil it for you guys if you haven't seen it but go check it out uh cowboy bebop really good it's on hulu 
Uh, it's not on Netflix, uh, which sucks because Netflix doesn't have ads. I mean, you could pay for Hulu without ads, but like that's freaking lame. Um, but yeah, it's on Hulu, and that's how I I had watched it. It's it's pretty good. The ending is a little confusing. I've heard various things on like ending explained, um, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Not really. I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not I'm not gonna comment on the ending. If you guys want to look for yourself, just look it up. Personally, it didn't make sense to me. Really, like I understand what happened but i guess it was a little bit vague so uh if you guys can explain it better uh leave it in the comments below i'll check it out and you know but um the fifth episode i did was blood of zeus netflix original in season one so <sighs> blood of zeus all right so i like greek mythology stuff i love norse mythology and well, Roman mythology is basically the same as Greek. It's just a different variation. Uh, yeah, I like Norse mythology a lot too, like your god of war stuff. And um, and one of my favorite things about uh, like Greek mythology, or well, one of the things that got me into Greek mythology, of course, was uh, reading like Percy Jackson and Heroes of Olympus, um, the Rick Reardon uh, series. Um, so, and I know, like, a lot of different stories and whatever. So, watching Blood of Zeus, I thought was going to be pretty cool. Um, I guess it was cool, but it was just not great. Um, it had the Greek uh, mythology, had the giants, I guess. Uh, which, the giants were weird. I wasn't expecting them to be, like, weird amalgamations of, like bugs and animal things i wasn't expecting that to be like that the plot was okay i guess it didn't have an excellent ending it all of the plot twists like the oh my gosh didn't see that coming moments so predictable like me and my dad watched the first few episodes together and i was like i already know what's about to happen he's his you know and then his mom yeah, I already knew what was going to happen just because I, I pay attention to how different stories are told and it was just so cliche and it was uh, super predictable. So, I mean, I, all of the plot twists that were supposed to make you like edge of your seat, I was like, yeah, I saw that coming a mile away. Um, animation was okay. It kind of, the way it was animated reminded me of castlevania which i'm not going to be reviewing castlevania this season you're gonna have to wait until season three for that um but the way the art style and the way it was animated uh reminded me a lot of castlevania i don't know if it's the same people that did it um and just some of the vibe uh, that i got from blood of zeus also sort of reminded me of castlevania except castlevania did it way better um but yeah blood of zeus not excellent um it just i don't know it was just not a great story it was super predictable animation was eh uh wasn't a fan of the characters really except for that one uh amazon or well, amazonist chick she was pretty cool um but yeah not a fan 4.7 out of 10 it was entertaining i guess uh it was overly violent for and gory for no reason like um i don't know it didn't like the gore didn't add anything to the story and an argument can be said that the gore in castlevania didn't add anything to it but when there's castlevania storytelling and everything else was already so good that that makes up for like the random gore and it'll be raining blood and stuff but they have room to fit in random stuff like that but with blood of zeus when everything else is lacking and you're just throwing gore it just is like why you know um but yeah blood of zeus wasn't excellent i wouldn't recommend it i mean if you guys want to check it out for yourself you can it's not very long of a series i think it might only be eight episodes um so i mean 
you want to waste your time, if you got time to kill, maybe check it out. But there's better things you could watch. So, yeah. Uh, that's all I have to say about that. Number six, um, sixth episode we did was uh, Seven Deadly Sins, Prisoners of the Sky, which is the, the movie. So, when I watched Seven Deadly Sins uh, last year, uh, 2020, during the summer when, what was that, season four first came out, just because that's where a lot of the shows that I've seen, uh, anime-wise, I watched last year during quarantine and stuff. I binge watched a lot of crap. So when I first watched Seven Deadly Sins, I was like blown away. This is one of my favorite shows. Uh, and I expressed that in my, um, my first episode of anime review I ever did. But like I said, opinions change. And since then, I've seen so much more good stuff than Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, so... I, I mean, I'll probably check out the new season that comes out. It's supposed to come out in June. Well, season five already came out in the Japan, but you have to have the... Uh, for me, I have the... I don't have a VPN, so I have the American Netflix. So I have to wait. I might check it out if I have space to fit it in, but I'm not too keen on Seven Deadly Sins anymore. It was okay. Uh, the movie was pretty entertaining uh, it had an interesting story um it was just kind of weird uh, i mean not really weird but it was eh, it was okay i gave it a 6.9 out of 10 it was if you like seven deadly sins then you'll probably think the movie was good i guess um but i was just sort of indifferent to it i mean it was like i said pretty entertaining i guess it was fun to look at it was vibrant as the show always is the destruction scale of all, always and seven deadly sins was crazy just i don't know i'm just kind of I'm, I'm i'm wouldn't say i'm done with seven deadly sins but i'm just not a huge fan of it so um yeah 6.9 out of 10 uh number seven though uh we got kill a kill uh not the movie just the the show only the it's a single season of the show uh, I'm going to give it 9.6 out of 10. And here's why. The show was very funny. Um, like, it was, at the time, I hadn't seen much, like, comedy anime. Uh, but the show manages to be funny and silly and ridiculous and have some dope fight scenes and stuff. Um, I don't know, the whole concept... And, I mean, I guess the whole show itself is sort of a parody. It's, well, the whole, I'm pretty sure I heard that the whole show was a parody of, like, shonen anime. Um, it, so, it's a parody of itself, basically, um, which I love. I think it's hilarious. There's a lot of, um, so, the main character, her name's uh, Ryuko Mon, uh, what is it? Ryuko Matoi and it's funny because if you ever seen Princess Bride Inigo Montoya um yeah there's just it, it's a whole thing she's looking for the person that killed her father and I mean in Princess Bride he's he says I'm Inigo Montoya you killed my father not prepared to die you know and there, I, I, when I first saw um kill all kill i immediately made that connection and i thought it was freaking hilarious and the whole thing where like uh clothes are taking over the world and there was like the nudists uh and was it nudist beach they're like the the nudist military it was so funny oh man it's a great watch a lot of action uh satsuki kiryuin i think the well the first antagonist but then you know things change but when they fight it's really cool so definitely not for kids though there's a lot of i mean there's no like well i was gonna say there's no nudity but like they don't show anything but it's kind of like it's risque so definitely i'd say not for kids but uh a great watch so if you are, I mean, I guess watch at your own risk. Um, episode 8 that I did uh, was 
Blue Exorcist. Now, I covered seasons one and two, uh, season two being the Kyoto Saga. Um, now, this was one of the first big anime that I ever watched. How long ago was that now? Must have been three years ago. Um, so, yeah, that was back when I was watching uh, Pokemon, and I had a weird anime taste back then because I was still sort of I was very new to the anime community uh really the only stuff I ever watched was uh Pokemon um but I was just starting to get into well anime so I had only seen like Sword Art Online and this so um hold on one second sorry guys my dog was crawling all over underneath my desk and she's massive so like it was causing a lot of stuff to fall over under me i had to take care of that real quick let me fix my lighting all right so yeah basically what i was saying was i hadn't uh, when i watched this i hadn't seen a lot of shows um like i said only really this and sword art online i'm trying to think of anything else that i've watched like besides pokemon at the time um no, not really. I mean, I I was watching Yu-Gi-Oh! at the time, but, I mean, that's not much better. Um, yeah, so, basically all I had watched at that point was Pokemon Diamond Pearl and XY, and then Digimon Fusion and Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexal, so. I hadn't really seen a lot, and this was one of the first shows I did watch. The plot sounded interesting, and it was pretty cool. Uh, up on my shelf, you can sort of see, I don't know if you can, well, I don't know, I guess, whatever, um, but there is, I have a few volumes of the manga, um, so I have some nostalgia toward the series, it was pretty cool, um, I still hold it to somewhat of a high regard, better than Sword Art Online, um, but, I mean, at the time when I watched it, I liked SAO more, looking back, this is definitely better than Sword Art um, the main character, son of Satan, he's at, well, he's half human, half demon or whatever, uh, and he joins, like, a church school, uh, like a Catholic school where they use magic and, well, well, they recite Bible verses, and they're, like, spells, and they, like, kill demons and evil spirits. It's pretty cool, and he has, like, this flaming sword. Um, I gave it an 8.2 out of 10. Nostalgia purposes... And it was overall a pretty cool show. Second season wasn't as good as the first season. It was kind of confusing to me watching it. I mean, I might try and watch it again just to see if I can make sense of it later on. Like, since, since, make sense of it since I watched it originally. But I heard a lot of people saying that it's kind of confusing to them as well and that it makes more sense in the manga. I heard rumors that they might be making a season three. Not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, so if they are, that would be cool. But yeah, overall, I feel like season two kind of pushed it down a lot. Um, and I gave it a point two. So that's all I'm gonna say about that. Um, episode nine, no game, no life. Um, the thing about no game, no life is that. It's overhyped, I think. Um, and there's uh, the whole meme where everybody's waiting for No Game No Life Season 2. How long have people been waiting? How long has that been? Like, eight years or something? Um, yeah, the concept. It, well, I mean, it's like, it's an isekai. Um, so, I mean, isekai are overdone. Everybody knows it. It's a whole kind of a meme in the anime community. Um... It's about playing games. There's a lot of there's a lot of references. It's definitely a comedy. Uh, there's a lot of references. There's a JoJo reference. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there was a JoJo reference, a Yu-Gi-Oh reference. So while watching it, there was some pretty funny parts. Um, definitely, again, not for kids. Uh, it doesn't show anything, but again, it's risque. So. I mean, I felt like it kind of relied on that heavily, um, and it kind of, I don't know, the story was lacking, uh, and, I mean, we never got a season two, so, it was, you know, what did I say, 7.9 or something, so, 
I don't even know, man. No Game No Life was just, eh. It was okay. So, I mean, it was fun to look at. It was definitely super vibrant. One of the most vibrant uh, animes I've ever seen. Just the colors were bright and it was crazy. But, uh, like, some of the stuff, it's like, you feel like you're tripping when you're watching it because there's just colors everywhere. So, yeah. I mean, if you're into comedies and, I guess what you they would call etchy i guess i don't i'm not too familiar with the terms uh you should go check it out i guess so I'm, i've heard a lot of people hold it to high regard um but me personally wasn't the biggest fan um episode 10 i did was again naruto shippuden arc this was the tenchi bridge arc where they had fought orochimaru and sasuke and then naruto uh, has the cloak or whatever, the nine tails cloak was it? he had the four tails or something, and he went beast mode, like, I say beast mode, but rather biju mode, um, but, yeah, overall, I mean, I'm not gonna say much about it, it was, like, I guess a 7.8 out of 10, I really don't care about the Naruto arc, so I'm just gonna, they were all pretty good, uh, at least to begin with. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm done watching the anime, because, and it was one of my goals for this year, but I'd rather read the manga. There's just, with the anime, there's, well, there's like 500 episodes. There's a crap ton of filler, um, which, I mean, if even if you had a filler guide, there's still a bunch of episodes, and each episode is a set time limit, right? With the manga, you don't have any filler, and you can read the story, gather the same story. Sure, it's not in motion, so, I mean, you won't be able to see it in happening, like the fights and stuff, um, but you you um, absorb the story at your own pace. So, I mean, if I really wanted to, I could probably um, get the same... Uh, I could read all of Naruto probably in a week or two if I wanted to. If I was just speed reading through it, binge reading it, I could get through the whole story in a week or two. And then if I was watching the show, it would take me like a few months. So I'm getting the same story and stuff, but it'll just be a lot quicker. Um, so yeah, and I wanted to watch other anime. Uh, I just didn't want to be stuck watching Naruto Shippuden for months i wanted to watch some other stuff so yeah um that's all i have to really say about the naruto shippuden uh anime reviews uh in general um so yeah uh episode 11 i did was attack on titan season four part one season four part one because we got part two coming out when is that next year january of 22 i think so uh yeah, part four, or I meant uh, season four, part one, 8.9 out of 10. Um, again, in true Attack on Titan fashion, starts off confusing. You don't know what's going on, really. And then later on throughout the season, you start to understand what's going on. You don't really understand why it's happening, but you understand what is happening. So, um, yeah, again... I bet it's going to be good, uh, finishing the sh series. I heard that it gets pretty crazy in the manga, um, so we'll just have to see. Um, so yeah, 8.9 out of 10. Uh, I'm going to take a break, break quick. I got to uh, catch my breath. I've been talking a lot and get some water, so I'll be right back. All right, so I took a little bit of a break, um, not long, probably about five minutes or less. Got some water so I can talk more. Um, so yeah, episode 12 I did, we reviewed Demon Slayer, Mugen Train, um, Demon Slayer the movie, or Infinity Train, whatever, uh, 9.8 9 out of 10, so, it was very good, I mean, I guess, for me, it was the first anime movie that I ever saw in theaters, so, um, I mean, there, there might be some, there's probably a lot of outside factors that made me rank it so high, um, 
one of them being before that, before seeing it in theaters, I hadn't gone to the theaters since December of 2019. So, yeah, it had been a been it had been a while since I had gone to the theaters. So I was pretty hyped, and I just went with my dad. So, I didn't, I mean I didn't have my brother or my mom with me. It was just me and my dad hanging out. We got some food at the theater, and we watched some Demon Slayer. It was subbed, which I don't care. The sub is fine. Um, it was very good. It was so visually pleasing, like. It was vibrant. One of the things I love about Demon Slayer is that the characters have, and also Attack on Titan does this. Um, the characters are like, they're the borders of the animation, like their like bodies are so like thick and dark, like the black. Um, I guess they call it, I guess cell shading. I guess I don't know if that's what I'm talking about. Um, but like they're like they have like the thick borders around their bodies and then they're just like so vibrant and the, the surroundings or some of the scenes like in the background almost look photorealistic like it's very good uh fight scenes excellent um the movie we had like um uh well i mean the akaza fight was fire when rengoku used his what was it 10th form or something the final form that he created for the flame breathing called rengoku with the giant uh flaming tiger with like the plasma blue eyes bruh that was my crap so yeah uh, that was a key and peel reference um so yeah demon slayer the movie very good 9.8 out of 10 again i gave it a 9.8 because i was hesitant hesitant to give it a 10 but i mean i guess i might as well give it a 10 but 9.8 i guess i mean again maybe if i hadn't seen it in theaters and um maybe if i just saw it at home by myself i would have ranked it slightly lower but i mean if i gave the show a 10 this was good, just as good as the entire first season of the show, if not better. So, it's about a 10, I'd say. So, between 9.8 and 10, there's, I mean, there's not much between 9.8 and a 10, so it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, I guess 9.8 is a functioning 10, so. It's not exactly a 10, but it might as well be. So, yeah, it was very good. Um... The Way of the House Husband was the next thing that I reviewed. That was uh, episode 13. So, yeah. Um, and that was season one. I guess there's only season one out, I think. Because that just came out. There's no way they already had season two. Um, 9.3 out of 10. Straight up fire. Opening. The opening freaking slapped. I, I saved that to my anime opening playlist. Uh, I forget what it's called. But it is a straight up headbanger. Like I love my my metal and uh, rock music, um, so that was so thrashy that o opening. It was straight up banger. Love it. Um, the plot itself. I said this before in my review of it. So ridiculous and funny, yet so simple. Um, executed very well. Good animation. The voice acting was great think the main the main character's name is tatsu i think he he's hilarious uh and how all of the other characters react to him at least outside characters like characters other than his wife i guess um like former or like other mob members or like uh even uh, what was it his wife's dad so his father-in-law it was pretty funny um so definitely worth the watch 9.3 out of 10 it's on Netflix. There's only like six episodes, I think. So, personally, I watched it all in one sitting. Um, so, yeah, it, it, easy watch, very good. Um, episode fourteen, Jujutsu Kaisen, JJK, probably the most hype thing at the moment, uh, at least in the anime community. Um, I haven't seen this much hype in a while uh, around a show. I mean, I guess the last thing I saw. Uh, hype around was demon slayer when it was like when demon slayer was new and it was popping like i mean i guess it wasn't like new new but it was still pretty new and demon slayer was starting to catch on yeah it's on that same level right now 
uh, the manga is sold out everywhere. I mean, I personally didn't like it enough to collect the manga, but yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, sold out everywhere. Everybody loves it. Um, yeah, very. It was. I, I say it's very good. I mean, it was definitely pretty good. Um, I'd say it's slightly overhyped. Um, I understood the hype for Demon Slayer because uh, I love Demon Slayer, but with this it kind of had some similarities in some ways um it kind of reminded me of like if you were to mix yokai watch with um demon slayer so yeah it was nine nine out of ten solid nine out of ten pretty good worth a watch good new gen uh shonen anime uh yeah i can't wait for season two it's gonna be pretty cool i guess so yeah and then episode 15 I did this uh, one yesterday, um, or last night, A Silent Voice, the movie. I mean, I'm not going to say much about it, other than it was a great movie. Um, definitely oddly relatable. Uh, had The Who. The Who was in the soundtrack. They played the song uh, My Generation in the opening of the movie. Bruh, if, if you have The Who in your soundtrack, instant go instant go at least for anime so i don't know about american movies or whatever but at least if, in anime if you've got like some classic rock in there like um because in um in jojo you know the to be continued that uh was it roundabout by yes that automatically makes jojo an instant banger so it's got the who in their um in their opening for the the movie like in the opening sequence bruh instant banger 9.5 out of 10 get there watch it i don't know what it's on right now it was on netflix when i watched it but when i had watched it it said you know you only got three more days to watch it and then we're taking it off so i don't know what it's on right now it might be on crunchyroll i don't have crunchyroll so yeah 9.5 out of 10 watch it uh but yeah that's all we have for today um as far as the recap i'm almost out of breath i've been talking for like half an hour of just about anime so um yeah i'm gonna get this video out i guess maybe tomorrow well tomorrow i'm gonna do the manga thing um and so maybe either tomorrow or sometime uh, during the week we'll start season three i got two shows lined up to review that i've already seen I talked about Castlevania. I'm hyped to review that. Uh, right now, um, I'm addicted to Castlevania, at least the anime. Um, and then I watched uh, Thus Spoke Rohan Kishibe, uh, the JoJo spinoff. So I'll review those um, in Season 3. And I'll, I'll see you guys in Season 3, I guess. Well, stay tuned tomorrow because I got a manga uh, unboxing haul thing that I'm going to be doing. Uh, so thanks for watching guys and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.